I've received questions on what I mean when I say to pause. And so to answer your questions, I am going to summarize what I have recommended to a variety of people and summarize those into three, three big things, three themes. So first, the three themes for pausing when getting clear are awe, interruption, and recovery. So what do I mean by that? First, awe. What is awe? So think of how you feel when you're being curious and expand that. You are allowing yourself to not only think through something, but you're thinking deeply and thinking big, so big that you'll be wondering, what, what is this? And you may be saying, wow, isn't that interesting? And I don't get where this is going, but I am just going to let it happen and see what's possible. It's compelling. It's like seeing those, you know how when you're hiking and you see mountains, but then you see that, that shadow of mountains in the distance, and perhaps it just keeps going deeper and deeper, and you feel a sense of awe. Or perhaps you feel it with a rainbow, or an amazing waterfall, or whatever, that's the feeling that I mean. Ah, okay, the second one, interruption. Now put yourself back into that, that state of where you're feeling in awe, and yet you're, you're, you're putting that into a, a context of where you are thinking. You're, you're walking around the lake, you're going for your run, you're sitting on a park bench, wherever you are, where you can just let your mind wander. And what happens? Some negative thoughts go through your mind and start cluttering it. And those thoughts say, what on earth are you doing? You don't have time for this. Or how on earth is that even going to happen? How will that future or whatever I'm seeing be even possible? I, I, I don't know if I can figure it out. Or... I can't go into my senior leadership team and explain this because it's way too big of an idea. I wouldn't even know how to explain it to them. And if I did, they would just say, that's, that's not possible. Or we tried that before. Or whatever happens where you are having negative thoughts, stop the flow of your deep thought, of your awe of that thought that is not just conscious, but is actually starting to trigger your subconscious. And you are going to interrupt that. You're going to interrupt it. And you're going to say to yourself, isn't that interesting? Whatever that negative thought is. And then you're going to move on. Third is recovery. So you are able to get to the point where you get into that ideation mode, that awe, and you're able to stay in flow by interrupting the negative thoughts. And then how is it going to sink in? Well, it sinks in through recovery. Recovery can be a relatively quick thing in between, pausing in between the busy work and just revisiting what just happened. Now, those, those, are, those are good. They're helpful. It's very difficult during those short pauses to truly get out of your conscious mind and allow your subconscious to do its work. 
Meditation may get there if you're able to meditate, highly recommend that. But the other is something that we all do, and that is sleep. Sleep is recovery for your body, for your mind. It also helps shift those thoughts, those big thoughts, those thoughts that created awe in you and reinforcing them. And then somehow it will allow other ideas to start solidifying, solidifying that. Recovering may give you the words to take in to the senior leadership team. Uh, one last tip is before you do your recovery, think positively. Revisit what you thought of before and have gratitude for what is now and for what is possible. Then when you rest, your mind, both the conscious mind and that strong subconscious mind will work in your favor. Now let's move to the three themes for being clear. When you're needing to communicate clearly so others can get clear. And those are curiosity, deep listening, and openness. So here, curiosity is your listening to the other person and you're, you're curious about what they're saying. Isn't that, isn't that interesting, right? And you're not thinking about what you're going to say next or how they're perceiving you, or how you perceive them, or any thoughts that are about you, you are thinking about their words and being curious about what they're saying. The second theme is similar, deep listening. It takes curiosity to one more level. And that is, you're not only interested in what they're saying, but you are interested in them and their position in this and what it means to them and what it might feel like to be in their shoes. It's empathy. It's truly seeking to understand. I'm going to interrupt myself right here and talk about where interruption fits with curiosity and deep listening, because there, there is a place for it. All right, so let's see if I can explain this well. First, um, rather than interrupting, the best thing to do is to create a, a stage, to set the stage before you begin the conversation where you are going to be curious and you're going to be listening deeply. Um, for example, you might say to the other person, so we're, we're going to meet, I really want to hear what's on your mind or I really want to hear more about this idea or I really want to hear how you're doing, whatever the context is. And then you'll say something like, and I am going to listen to what you say, you know, talk for about a minute or two. I may interrupt if, if I'm not understanding. And when I do, please take that opportunity to check in to see if I do understand so that I could speak your words back to you. Something like that. If, if you've forgotten to do that or... If you're not able to get it back on track, you may have to interrupt because your, your ability to deeply listen to the person is, is going to break if they're going on and on and on because you're not a therapist. And so uh, there are a few ways you can do this. One, you could lean back and smile, make them all positive. 
um, you could just go, huh, like, that's interesting. Or whatever fits you, hey, practice it in the mirror. <laughs> just make sure that whatever facial expression or tone that you that's coming from you to the other person is one that is positive and stays in that tone of of listening another another way to to break this up is to you know, pick up a notebook and and write a note and and when you're writing a note they will have a natural pause Again, it's positive because you're picking up and you're wanting to know something. And during that pause, then you could ask, can you, can you, can we see if I understand what you're saying? Right. That's what I mean by deep listening and curiosity, including some opportunity to keep it in the flow, just like you've learned to keep yourself in flow when you're getting clear. All right, last one, openness. You won't get it right every time. Something will happen that'll throw you off, that'll cause your emotions to rise. Their emotions will rise in a way that you're not ready to address and you know what it's it's okay it's one meeting make it one meeting of many continuous meetings stay open to what's possible don't kick yourself for what was said what wasn't said just move on and make the next one even better stay open make it informal so that they stay open everything we say here for example is you know is is fine this is this is your place to speak to me and in this meeting there is no judgment we are just going to talk and if we don't say everything or if we say the wrong things well, my door is open, just come and let's talk again. Or I may need to come visit you after this if it hasn't entirely sunk in, okay? Whatever it is, make this context, make the energy in the space of that meeting positive and open, safe. I'll recap. When you're pausing to get clear, remember awe, interruption, and recovery. And when you're pausing to be clear with your communication so that another person can get clear, remember curiosity, deep listening, and openness. I hope this helps. You can reach out to me anytime Lori at thepivotcatalyst.com.